Hello! Welcome to another day in the world of cooking. I am thrilled to be cooking today from the How Not to Die cookbook and to be making this recipe in particular. So this is a three bean chili. You see there's some pictures of it there. It's some pretty interesting texture. And in this case, it was served over black rice. We today are gonna to be serving over sweet potatoes. So I've just put sweet potatoes in the oven to bake at 400. That'll roughly take an hour. In order to do that, I just put some holes in the top, covered them in tin foil so they kind of like steam in there. And what we've got going here is a couple of pots that are getting ready with that steaming water that's going to saute. And it, actually, it's a broth. So when I do the broth, I add the water, followed by some of this sort of vegetable-y paste mixture. So that is making its way, and I've done a bunch of prep work so that we can kind of chat more than have to throw things away. So if you kind of come over to the workstation, there's always a place for chopping involved, and each of these pots, so one batch gets one onion. So I've got three onions here, because as you will know, I always make a double batch for my family, and that double batch works for us really well, keeps everybody fed for a couple of meals, uh, we do have the red onions. I was at the regular grocery store today. Um, when we are thinking about like most nutrients, you want to be looking for really colorful stuff. So I don't always succeed in that. Sometimes I just take what I've got. And sometimes what I've got is a sweet onion, which I happen to love. And But you know, if you have the onion on hand, why not go for it? It's really tasty. Um, Maybe I'll do a small and a large in our pot, and then the other pot will get one. So chili, as you probably are aware, can be made in a hundred different ways. A lot of people turn their nose up at vegetarian chili. They kind of have this sense of like, ugh, if there's no meat, why would I want it? And my actually, I will tell you, my husband and I felt very similarly about our chili until we found this recipe. This recipe just took it over the top for us. We were so happy with the flavor. We were so satisfied with the feeling that we had. And if you can get that black rice in there, I totally recommend it. We're trying sweet potato this time just because it would be a new try for us. And we like to try new things. So if you are cooking from the Dutch oven type pots as I am here, one thing you want to keep in mind is they do not need to go all the way to high. And in fact, a lot of pans don't recommend that you put them all the way to high because it doesn't do good things to the pan. So these are on like a medium. And then once they're ready, I actually turn them down even farther. It's like medium low and then low once you get to the simmer. But do what you need to do. Another thing that we have today that's gonna go in is this unami sauce. So this is something that comes in the beginning of the How Not to Die cookbook. It can be easily put together in like a one cup serving. It's like everything in the kitchen sink type recipe for flavors. And you kind of get this really beautiful blend of sweet, salty, and a little bit of spice. So it's great. I, in fact, I had a little bit of the Persian dill rice left over from a recipe last week. And I just threw a little bit of that sauce over it and had it as a snack. Oh my gosh, because the Persian dill rice pilaf had onion in there. So it had this really beautiful crunch. And then, mm, so good. So if you do make something like that up, uh, it only keeps for so much time. So you want to make sure that you're either freezing it or using it up. I made this only a few days ago. Um, okay. We're gonna switch over. So I've pre-cut my peppers. I've cut the middle out of them. From this point, we're just going with thin little strips followed by a quarter turn and cutting the other way. So essentially diced. And peppers just add this beautiful flavor. Uh, the recipe calls for one pepper per batch. The color is up to you. So if you wanted yellow or orange or green, green is not as sweet as the others, so you kinda wanna keep that in mind when you're cooking sometimes. If you, if you know that you want that more bitter flavor or you know that you have children that would balk at one color versus another, do what you've got to. Uh, some people just plain don't like peppers, which I, I've got no idea how to help you. I mean, obviously omit it from the recipe, 
but I don't know of like a substitute that feels reasonable. I personally love peppers. I would put them in like almost everything. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's the pepper going in with the onion and it's one cup of vegetable broth per batch. So I have two cups in one, one cup in another, and then later, once we're adding in the rest of our ingredients, we'll, we'll add in another cup and two cups. So the thing about recipes like this, a lot of them have some perishable ingredients, like your, your diced tomato, or sorry, your perishables, like your fresh, like onions and the peppers and the garlic. But then there's a ton of, you know, beans and tomatoes and tomato paste and spices which don't spoil, go really quickly, um, and leave you not having quite as much cutting as you would otherwise. So if you are in a hurry, I feel like chili is a great recipe. You can spend 20, 30 minutes putting the meal together. It simmers for a little bit, but you can be off doing your own thing while it simmers. And then you've got this super tasty, super hearty meal, which I just love. So our family is big into one pot, meals, things that you can kind of do in one step. It's obviously more than one step, but I don't have to keep getting out a new container in order. And in fact, you'll see me pour like the tomato paste today and the beans from bowls and stuff. I wouldn't do that normally. Normally I would open the can and dump as I go. I'm only putting them in those extra bowls for our benefit so that I'm not here opening a can and draining. But normally I would do that while something else is sauteing. So. Keep that in mind when you cook too. You're welcome to not dirty a bunch of things, but to kind of use as little as possible. That's what I do in general. Life is too busy to have too many dishes to do. And you know, my husband and I have different philosophies on, he loves the dishwasher. I like to use the dishwasher for some of the like plates and bowls, but big things like big serving bowls, I hate putting those in because they take up so much space in the dishwasher. It just feels like a waste. Looks like I could just more easily do it myself. So we're almost done chopping up our pepper. Obviously, when you're doing a triple batch like this, it takes up a lot more time. And keeping in mind, while I'm doubling batches, you could have batches too. It's totally a possibility. So those are getting going. The direction there is to allow that onion to sort of get translucent. They change colors a bit. And they're going to cook for like, they're going to simmer for 50 minutes. So I'm not really all that concerned about like, ooh, how much time is everything getting? Uh, what I have now is six cloves of garlic, so two cloves for one batch, and then that other one's getting a double batch. So what I'm doing is doing a quick mince. I could pull out my mincer, but I don't want to. <laughs> I've, been, I've been pretty busy today, so I kind of feel like, let me just get it done, right? Let me pull all that in quickly mince it. It's going to add great flavor anyways. Garlic is such a beautiful flavor. It's going to enhance what's going on in that pot. Which I cannot wait. And actually it's cold and rainy here today. So I don't, I don't plan based on the exact weather. So when it happens to correspond really well, eventually it's just cold all the time. And there's, like, there's no way to really tell. But at this time of year, you can sometimes have like a really nice warm day and then a cold day that follows. So this week is gonna be pretty cold and rainy. It's New England. New England likes to be cold and rainy. Okay, so kind of pull that up from the, from the cutting board there. And then we just give everything a bit of a stir. So this tends to be a common base to soups anyways. Onion, garlic, a little bit of broth, and some peppers. Very common, very, very common. Okay. So once we're to that point, add the garlic. So minced chili. I'm not actually doing a minced chili because our kids would notice it too much. So when something calls for minced chili, I just take some red pepper flakes, one, two, one, two, three, four, and we just get a little bit of heat that way as opposed to overdoing it. Um, and then mushrooms, great. So I'm gonna turn these down a bit so that they don't overcook. And I'm gonna prep our mushrooms, which I need two to three cups of chopped mushrooms per. So it's unusual, different recipe books will do it differently, 
Um, some will say like, oh, do a certain amount of ounces. So maybe you buy, like this one is eight ounces. Um, but two cups, two to three cups means now I have to measure. Um, not the biggest deal, but not my favorite either. But yeah, you know, I'll just handle it. Just get her done. And one of these I got last week. In fact, let me just give these a quick rinse. So rotating stock, obviously a really big deal. Um, when I do that kind of thing in the fridge, I, I actually pull everything out. Like I work, you know, I used to work at a restaurant. You have to put all the older stuff in the front to so pull everything out, put the new stuff in the back that keeps the stock rotating appropriately. Um, so I do keep an eye on that when I'm cooking to try to keep everything going. Also, when I make my grocery lists, right, before I went to the grocery store today and my grocery list says I need six sweet potatoes. I knew I had a few sweet potatoes downstairs, so I check on that, and then I only go buy four sweet potatoes because you don't want stuff just rotting in your kitchen, right? <laughs> One of the easiest ways for me to end up having things rot in the kitchen is to be at the store and spontaneously buy something that I don't have a plan for. It's the perfect way for me to end up being like, oh, why did I do that? I knew better. Yeah. <laughs> so the great thing about mushrooms, they give vegetarian dishes that kind of meaty texture. So do enjoy mushrooms in the context. They also soak up whatever flavor you've got going. So that's another super big benefit to mushrooms. Uh, we have... Our family's divided about half and half in terms of who likes mushrooms and who doesn't. So we, the way we handle that in our family, we ask everybody try. And if I know that that one person doesn't like mushrooms or some other thing as much, I'll kind of pick around it a little bit or I might take some of their mushrooms for myself. But in general, we ask that everybody keep trying because it is blended in with a bunch of other foods. And, you know, for years I didn't like zucchini and then... I got to be a grown-up, and it turns out I do like zucchini, but that can happen to us where we just, I didn't like tomatoes as a kid. Now I like tomatoes. I feel like I'm sort of in process with squash and um, eggplant. So, you know, our taste buds change over time. Our, our How we eat something can sometimes change our perception of it. So I always just encourage my kids as well as other people in the world, like, don't count it out. At least give it a try. And I find that some of these cookbooks say the same thing. If you've never, if you haven't liked okra in the past, don't count it out yet. Give it another try. I think those are reasonable things to say. Reasonable, like, requests. Just try it again. And you may find it's not your favorite. Like, I tried okra again early this fall, and I was like, meh. It's not that great, right? <laughs> it's okay. So I think... Will I try it again? I will. I absolutely will because you never know. You never know when you're going to fall in love with something. But I do I, I do try to be cognizant of like who likes what in my family, who's going to enjoy this meal, who's, who is this going to be more of a therapeutic meal for, that kind of a thing. So I do try to keep track in the context of the family. And my husband and I, we are super adventurous. We like different – to try – foods from different areas and different flavors and cuisines. And so uh, it's really difficult for us. I think when we first had our first baby, there's now four, we were, we were on the bandwagon of mac and cheese and quesadillas and, you know, all that stuff, spaghetti. And we just gained so much weight. Like it turns out our bodies just physically cannot go ahead and eat that much kid food. It, it just, it's not... It's not conducive for us older people. So we had to find a way to make sure that our own health wasn't compromised just because we had a bunch of kids. And some people feel like their way into that is to cook two meals. And I think for me, that just feels like a no-go. So here I'm mixing in the mushroom. And mushrooms release a little bit of liquid too. So. That's a really big positive if you start to feel like your vegetable broth is going down. Not to fear, it's going to get a little more going in there. So once we've got that going, let's see where we're at. 
Let's see. We have garlic. We have our minced chili, which for me was the red pepper. The mushrooms. Stir in chili powder and tomato paste. So lots of chili powder. Two tablespoons is the, the, the recommendation. I don't even know if I have that much. Let me give everybody what I've got. And then you can actually, in these kinds of scenarios, go ahead and add a bunch of other spices in to make it work for you. But I also happen to know we need our savory spice blend, probably one teaspoon per. So added, oh, that's not the right one. Added that in. The turmeric, it's usually a quarter, yep, a quarter teaspoon. So one of these is gonna get a quarter and one of these is gonna get a half. Turmeric, it turns out, has quite a bitterness to it. So if you are not accustomed to eating a lot of different spices and you're like, ooh, let me just throw in a bunch of turmeric, I would be like, mm, go slow because in these meals like this where you just add in maybe a quarter teaspoon, you're not gonna notice anything, but if you were to like make yourself a smoothie and really go heavy on the turmeric, you would you would taste it. So um, when it comes to pepper, I just sprinkle a little. But now that's like a ton of your ingredients out of the way. And then I gotta add in that tomato paste. So let me just quickly move around those spices. I add a little salt to the how not to die recipes because I happen to know, oh, look at you looking only at me. I happen to know that our family's not going to eat the meals without salt. We, sh we gave it a try. There was too much complaining. I'm not one to be like, ooh, let's, let's have a lot of complaining in the house. Um, so we have a quarter cup of tomato paste. So it turns out each uh, can, those small cans, comes out to be about three quarters cup of tomato paste. So for these triple batch, it would be one small can of tomato paste going between the two pots. So the thing about tomato paste is it's heavy. I usually like to take the, the flat end of my spatula and move it around a bit just to incorporate it faster. I used to sit there and try to stir and stir and it's like, it took forever, but this is gonna give you kind of a thick consistency to your chili. It's gonna add that. And tomato paste will do that, almost like flour would do that to gravy, so. You wanna make sure that you don't over add at the same time. Then over on this side, same kind of deal. I just push it around a bit with that flat end of that spatula so that incorporating it doesn't take forever in a day. Makes it a little easier. And again, because this is going to simmer for 50 minutes, I'm not so concerned about whether or not each thing got its five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever. It's all gonna get a bunch of time. So I don't worry about that kind of a thing. Okay. Our spices are in, our mushrooms are in. Add the remaining ingredients, including the second cup of broth, and simmer until lentils are tender for about 50 minutes. So, <coughs> bless me. Um, our umami sauce is two tablespoons. So this one's gonna get its two. And then the other one, I can kind of give you a sense of what's happening here. It's going to get its two times two. So that's going to go in easily. It's one 14 ounce can of diced tomato per batch. So that goes in. And then it's one can of black beans, one can of red beans per batch. So that's two cans of each there. And then a half cup of red lentils. In this case, a full cup of red lentils. The rest of our broth is gonna go in. So a cup of broth over here and two cups of broth over here. Of course, that was just water because I've already added my, my broth components. And then we just move it around incorporate everything. So this is a three bean chili. Your three beans are the red lentils, the red beans, and the black beans. Um, 
These happen to be a small red bean. You can also use kidney beans. I just find that kidney beans have a thicker skin and I didn't enjoy them much as a kid. So I just spare my kids things that I don't really enjoy myself. <laughs> and so this is practically done at this point. Even though this is gonna simmer for 50 minutes, I don't have to do anything else with it. I'm gonna put lids on it. I'm gonna put my timer on for 50 minutes. My sweet potatoes are gonna bake. And when all that is done, you could open up those sweet potatoes and mash them or just you know, put each plate with a little bit of sweet potato and throw it over. It's really up to you. But you could also serve it with chips or black rice or regular rice or regular white potatoes, all those options. But what I have found is that with the vegetarian recipes, when you have a soup, instead of just being like, oh, well, the, there it is, they often do serve it over a rice or some kind of a starch to beef it up, give it some heft. So that is this recipe. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a super tasty one. I very much recommend it. So enjoy, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.